After connecting to your G4 locally, um, go up here to your collect button. After clicking, clicking the collect button, you should have your device ID and your uh, device ID, or which would be the same name for your uh, one measurement tube. So in this case, uh, I have one measurement tube turned on in my XFC G4, and it has the same name as my uh, station ID. And underneath this uh, flow measurement tube, I have some choices that I can make. So I have characteristics, daily uh, records, log records, and events. I also have a trend file that was built later in the tutorial and I can collect the trend file at the same time so um, when you get to uh, to that portion you can collect the trend file and uh, view it or output the file so the next thing we need to look at is the outputs and you can see this is kind of broke up into uh, three boxes we have the output section we have the range section and then we have some custom output files here and so the first one we're going to look at is a laptop file. And uh, when we collect historical data, it automatically creates a laptop file for us. And so that's why it's grayed out, letting you know that you uh, are, in fact, collecting a laptop file. But we could output to the screen. So if we check the box here that says screen, after we collect this data, it's going to populate to the screen and we can go through and look at it. So that's what I'm going to do for this tutorial. We can also output to our archive database. We can output to a DOS meter file or TF data file or long-term database. And then since I am, in fact, uh, collecting a trend, I could also output the trend database. The range, um, by default, all data. Or I could check last and then put in amount of days that I want to grab. And so uh, by default, 30 days. So I'm going to go back to all data and just grab everything out of this G4 that's in there. Uh, and then down here at the bottom, I have spreadsheet log period file, spreadsheet daily, totals, and then if you were going to do a coastal flow or um, ASCII file, you could also choose those. Now, from this uh, directory, we could choose the help, and from here this should be context sensitive, and will fill us in on how to do exactly what we're talking about step by step, and then it should also fill us in on uh, what each one of the files do for us. Okay, so there's ASCII and the coastal flow and so forth. Now, uh, if I do collect a spreadsheet, then we could go out to the uh, directory where it saves the spreadsheet and, uh, and take a look at it. And same way with the laptop file. You're asking where is this laptop file going to be saved, so I'm going to take a second and show you that. Come up here to your setup button, drop that down. Uh, let's jump over to directory paths, and right here I have data file path. It's under C colon backslash PCCU7 backslash PCCU data, and then it's going to be backslash, and then the name of my um, uh, flow computer, and then that would be my uh, laptop file that we're actually collecting. And then the same way with the archive directory, long term database, uh, and then also the spreadsheet file. And so you can see each one of them has a uh, directory path. So after we make our choices in the historical collection window, it's going to send it to these directory paths and then this is the default that I have set up here you could browse uh, at this point and find a specific place that you wanted to send uh, say the laptop file for example you would just choose that here so I'm going to